Good evening. We call to order the West regular meeting, West Valley City Council. We note that we have uh, six members of the council present. Councilwoman Lang is excused tonight. We'll begin our meeting by uh, an opening ceremony. We turn to Council Member Steve Bueller for that. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to invite everybody to stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have a scout here tonight, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, generally, if we can usually convince them to come up and just tell us why they're here tonight, working on something in their scout program. Is he willing to? He's scared. I assume. Uh, must be working on something in scouting and so citizenship in the community is the most common one so well thank you welcome tonight we'd let you come to the microphone but we don't require it we do want you to come back when you're older and not have it be a negative experience so uh, all right and that's probably it uh, then our minutes of May 1st to the council for a motion on the minutes. Move to approve the minutes of May 1st, 2018. Second. And don't see no further discussion. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. <laughs> Passes unanimously. Okay, now we get to our public comment period. Uh, don't know if all of you have been here before, so we'll just. Uh, remind the general outline. Uh, we do set aside a period of 30 minutes, uh, up to 30 minutes. It can be less, it can be more. And then an individual can speak for five minutes. This is not a policy discussion time. Uh, the council can only discuss policy when it's on their agenda in a public meeting. So, you can say anything you want on any topic you want. The rule doesn't apply to you, but it does apply to us. So it's your time to speak, take what you need up to five minutes, and the, for propriety, the, the comments are addressed directly to the mayor. If you have questions, we may deal with those afterwards, and sometimes we can briefly comment, but we do have to be circumspect in that. So. With that, uh, we will turn first to those who signed up, and let's let's see. Do we have a public comment period? Okay, we do have a public comment item. So, if you signed up, uh, public hearing. Excuse me. Yeah, there's public comment, then there's a public hearing. In the public hearing, we also allow public input and comments, but we would ask if you're here to speak about uh, our Title VII, and I'm sure most of you probably are, the intricacies of our city code probably have a lot of comment. Uh, we'll ask you to wait till then. Uh, that would be application ZT5 2017 or Ordinance 18-13 on our municipal code. So. With that clarification, then we'll start uh, with Jerry Simonson. I'm just going to uh, speak on the zoning of the area in Highbury. <clears throat> My name is Jerry Simonson. I live at 5312 West Sefton Drive. If the proposed zoning were to go through, the complex would be directly across the street from my home. In the short time I have, I hope to set aside the emotions 
the statistics that have been associated with the rezoning issue. It seems to me the council needs to ask themselves and answer one simple question. I will try and phrase this question in such a manner in an appropriate context, hopefully avoiding apparent prejudice. If one were to drive, if one were to drive down Highbury Parkway, assuming the rezoning was approved, two obvious observations would occur. One, on the south side of the parkway, we'd see a nicely well-kept community, much like several areas in West Valley. Not luxurious or affluent, but nice. Two, as one looks to the north, they would see three large multiple dwelling structures. The question then presents itself, will the new structure with 60 to 144 units enhance yours and ours vision and perception of our city? Or would it perpetuate the stereotype we, including the council, have been trying so hard to change? Thank you for your time and patience. Thank you. Next we have Kelly Bertosh. Good evening, City Mayor, City Council, all you wonderful people at Mac Table, and to you, the citizens. Thanks for being here. My name is Kelly Birchosh. I live 5954 West Sinus Circle. As you guys know, throughout the year and a half, I'm a very animated person. I express myself, and I can't control that very well. It was known to me very much by one of two of your officers over last week. And that's what I want to speak with you about. Uh, utopia. Why is West Valley even involved with utopia? To me, <laughs> from what I was told, utopia is part of West Valley and West Valley is part of utopia. Now that was beating my head last week very well. To me, isn't that a conflict of interest? That's a business. And what is the city doing when there is to a business to going to be making money off of. Not only that, they have come to people's yards. And uh, I'm sure that some of that's already been aware. Uh, last week was a kind of ugly situation for myself and a couple of my neighbors. And uh, I'm debating whether to prosecute. You guys do not have right of way to everywhere you feel you're, you can zone and just take over. The laws are there to protect us as homeowners and property owners. And I wish that you guys would really have some of your decent inspectors, the one that you have out there right now, I really think that he's on the payroll for uh, Jackson, B. Jackson and Company. It kind of intrigues me is why you guys are so much involved with all these corporations. And I'm sorry, Nicole. <laughs> I'm sorry. But this is really driving me nuts. I was asked by B Construction or B Jackson not to call and involve the police department, yet they called them on me. And uh, I have a big problem with that. You guys just do not have the rights to just take and do whatever you want. Now, as I was explained by these officers and one of your inspectors, it don't matter what we say, what we do, you guys as a city can do whatever you want. That was right out of their mouths, and it's probably on their camera. And you know what? That does not go over well, not for me. This is my community. This is my home. Hunter is my home. I don't... I have a rough time with West Valley. I wish you guys would buy me out and just push me out of your city. Uh, make it a straight way all the way to 72 to 56. Come buy me out and get me out of your city. If you want me to get away and quit bitching and complaining, do it. But please, you guys don't have the rights to do whatever you want. And I sat here a few weeks ago and I was totally flabbergasted when you have 30 people here speaking against one thing, and I'm going to talk about the Kmart property on 41 and Redwood Road. Three of you voted no, and the rest of you voted to do it. Again. Why? You don't listen to the people. I've asked numerous times about parking on streets. Streets are highways for cars, not parking lots. I still haven't seen one thing done on my street or near me. 
nor speed control. And your officers actually brought that up about cars going very fast down that road. Again, you place signs in, that light up on Chatterby, but you refuse to do anything about 6,000 West. It's a speed zone there that I can guarantee you I radar them up to 85 miles an hour. And that's ridiculous because there's a lot of schools there and there's a lot of kids walking up and down because you have a park besides the schools. Something needs to be done. And I wish that you guys would look at these things and take advantage of listening to what people say and jump on them before somebody gets killed. Because at this point, it's going to fall back on you guys for not doing what's being asked. Control the speed. And please, don't let your people say that you guys can do whatever you want. You can't. And you know that. We're protected by law. And if we have to go above the city, I will. I'm not afraid to get an attorney and come back at you. We've done it before as our community. And by gosh, we can do it again. Please, consider our feelings and our thoughts. Don't just help yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Matt McPherson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Thanks very much for having us out here again. I uh, don't want to rehash everything that we went over before. I sent a letter out to uh, the City Council and to the Mayor and uh, to the City Manager uh, with some proposals that we had from our community. I was happy to hear in your uh, planning meeting that there is some discussion going on about that. Um, and uh, I am I am happy that uh, you guys have uh, seemingly engaged uh, with us on this uh, very much so. We are still here to voice our concern because we want to let you know that we're, we're not going away and we, we hope to follow this through all the way. Um, I do have an additional letter to drop off with you as well. Um, but suffice it to say, the only thing I guess I want to bring up here is we've had some incredible enforcement being done by the West Valley City Police Department. Very much appreciate the effort of especially our COP officer, Mike Lines. He's been in and out of our neighborhood uh, sometimes several times a day. Um, for several weeks now, has ticketed uh, dozens of vehicles, has towed, and uh, has worked really, really hard. And if you could see the difference between uh, the south side of Highbury Parkway between two weeks ago and uh, for the, in the last several days, you would see that that's making a big, uh, a big difference. Now that has forced those vehicles to go elsewhere, <coughs> including into our neighborhood, which we're not so happy about. Uh, but um, we, we are at least seeing an increase of the police presence, the enforcement of the existing signs, and we are seeing that that enforcement has a really good effect on those particular areas. And so we just wanted to, to point out as a community that we very much appreciate the work that has been done by the city. We are here to say please don't um, to follow through with the, with the zoning. Uh, if the zoning commission votes to, to rezone that land, we ask you to, to, uh, to deny that. Um, or whatever the process be if, if we have to appeal to you guys have that done but um, the last thing I would just say is is that um, um, we understand that the, the City Council the mayor um, the zoning the Public Works Department they've probably been hearing a lot from us as well as the police department um, and we understand that you guys have your priorities and your desires um, with all due respect to is we, we feel like that uh, that those should be um, always secondary to the communities which are most impacted so we would uh, very much appreciate any sort of changes or requests that uh, that you discuss and work with us as a community because we are very much against uh, what's going on right now and we are very much in favor of the progress we've seen in the last couple of weeks and we hope that you'll keep up with that with us thank you thank you next we have Nicole McRae Mayor, thank you so much for allowing me the time to take a few minutes. I'm Nicole McCray. I live in Highbury Place, um, Ivory Homes Community. Um, I'm located at 5228 West Sandwell Drive. I too wanted to say thank you to Officer Mike Lines, who has been out dig diligently ticketing cars parked illegally in the 30 minute only sections of Highbury Parkway. Um, his hard work has definitely been paying off. Um, very helpful, and we're very grateful. Um, we still ask um, that the owners of Highbury Pinnacle Apartments 
be asked to remedy their parking problem. Um, now that the signs are being enforced, um, the Pinnacle residents are now pushing in further and further into our neighborhood down Dartford Way. The last few nights, we've had 11 to 15 cars parked outside our homes, disturbing our residents at, at all times of the night. We continue to ask that you make this street resident-only parking for our Dartford residents, and that those homeowners be issued a few parking passes. Um, again, I'm here to reiterate that we do not change the zoning for the empty lot directly west of Pinnacle Highbury Apartments um, due to the small streets in Highbury. They cannot support any more traffic that we have now at night especially. And we um, just cannot have these crowded streets. It's just not safe. Thank you again for your time and we really do appreciate all the efforts and things that have been going on and for listening to what we have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, PJ Webster. <clears throat> Hi, Mayor. Uh, the clock's still counting, but I probably won't even take that much time. Um, I just wanted to get up today. Uh, my wife and I actually have taken some uh, pictures along Daybury Drive and of, of the, uh, the area in question um, around where Garbett is proposing to build. This picture actually is right outside of Garbett Homes, right next to a school zone. And as you can see, the parking is always there. That's day or night. This is another picture from the opposite angle. And this is from the roundabout, just south of, of where I took that previous picture. Again, these are the Garbett Home townhomes. And these are labeled so that you have that as well, so that you can see. Um, I actually got one that shows the Garbett townhome sign with parking on the street outside. Now, we don't want to say that Garbutt is the only one has has this issue. There's a couple here that I have that are near the Ivory townhomes. All we really want to say is that townhomes and high density home developments are not the solution. They're driving more traffic, more parking. It's only a matter of time. That is a school intersection at that roundabout. It's only a matter of time before someone speeds through there, can't see around these cars that are parked there, and injures a child. Lastly, I just wanted to show, this is not a great representation because there's only three cars on Dartford. This is typically much, much more. But I did just want to have a way that you guys have a visual representation of what's going on, and I hope that you do oppose the zoning as much as we do. I'll leave these with the county recorder. Thank you. Thank you, Liana Black. Councilmen and women, thank you very much for letting us come, and I offer you my gratitude and respect. I've been a West Valley resident for 14 years, and I reside now on 5356 Sefton Drive in the neighborhood. And I, uh, I, my previous location was behind Smith's 4100 South, and it's kind of sad because when you consider, like, what I would like to offer you is my opinion as a mother, and. When you consider what mothers have to think about with their children, I have four children, and the area where we lived was very, very densely populated. And it just seems like more and more and more people came. It was a cul-de-sac, and people park on the, on the uh, concrete, they park everywhere, and they don't care. And there's men outside on the grass, and it's a very unsafe place for my children, so we had to move because of that. We liked our home, but it was a very unsafe place where we were. So. If you consider from a mother's point of view this zoning issue, I would like to ask that you deny that request because of the school, because of traffic, because of noise. The area where we live is already very congested. If you think about the intersection of 5600 West and 3100 South, that's already a mess. That's a mess. And Daybury is a very peaceful drive right now. Think about what would happen if you add that many more people and that many more families into the mix. Is it safe for my children to walk to school? Is it safe for them to be outside playing? Is it safe because there is a lot of people, there's a lot of cars, there's a lot of noise, and I w I'm not rich, <laughs> you know what I mean? We are just middle class people, just ordinary middle class people. And all we're asking for in that neighborhood is to just have a place to be that's safe for our kids. 
We're not affluent, we're not wealthy, we're not draper, any of that. We're just asking politely for a place to be that's safe. And I think if you look at the neighborhood itself, there are already a lot of apartments and townhomes. Probably too many, but we could leave that. I just think if you add more, that you are going to add congestion, parking, trouble with that. I am employed part-time by the City of West Valley through the Family Fitness Center, and I am also employed part-time with Granite School District. So I know a little bit about the background of that area and the neighborhood. Uh, Granite School District is not as well funded as some of the other school districts. And it makes it very difficult for us as a family to find a good school. So I mean, that was one of the great drawing points of moving to the Highbury neighborhood because of Neil Armstrong Academy. It's a great school. And I have many friends that I know that are going there and taking their children there because it's a great school. And if you look at the grades of the school, Neil Armstrong, the last time I checked, Neil Armstrong was 75 where the school I work at in West Valley is like 475 down the line. It's an excellent school and it's highly sought after. Many people want to go there. I've had people ask if they could use my address so their children could go there. <laughs> I would not like to see the school be overrun. I don't want to see it be tapped past its resources. Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's important to me as a mother to be able to give my child an opportunity. And, you know, many people have given me a hard time for living in West Valley, but I always defend West Valley. I defend this area because it's a beautiful area. It doesn't deserve the stigma that it gets. And I, I was raised in Arizona. I'm not a Utah, but I have been for the past 23 years. <laughs> I used to live in Provo, but I, I want to call Utah my home. I'm thankful to live in West Valley, and I, I feel like it's a wonderful place. And my boss and my um, the people that run the Family Fitness Center are, are here and associated with Town Hall, and I know a little bit about that since I worked with them for five years, but I just want you to know that I love West Valley, and I think that this rezoning is a mistake, and I hope that you'll please consider the voices of my friends and neighbors as we ask you please to deny that. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Christy Johnson. <coughs> Hello. Thank you for letting me down. I actually live in Highbury in the Ivory townhomes. And my townhome was one of the first ones built, so I've been here now 10 years. And I moved from South Jordan and everybody said I was crazy to come to West Valley. And I've loved it here and I've loved our community and I've watched it grow. But part of that growth has caused us problems, and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, we love our neighbors. We like the people who live there. We're just asking that we not bring in high density. We have so much traffic on that road. Um, the Ivory townhomes allow for four cars each home. Four cars. Two car garages, two in your driveway. There are still so many cars on the street, you cannot safely turn left nor right out of where I live without accidents starting, people slamming on their brakes. Um, the traffic going down Daybury Drive is very heavy. People are driving so fast. I fear for my children to walk to school, and they go to Neil Armstrong Academy. I walk with them. I appreciate the crossing guards, especially at that roundabout before they go to Neil Armstrong. As the cars go through there so quickly, they do not notice. And children are trying to go on the crosswalk and think it's safe and cars just pop through. So as we walk down towards Neil Armstrong on that road, it is just lined and lined with cars. You can't see. I picked up my daughter today to go get braces and I was almost hit by a car coming out of Pinnacle because they could not see me coming down that road. That's what we're asking for, is just help with these roads so that they're safe, safe for everyone in our community. We're not asking for you to remove people. We like our neighbors. We just ask that if you consider rezoning, please think of the safety of our children. Please think of those people who have made it their home, who want to be here. I moved from, like I said, I moved from South Jordan and I defend West Valley every day. I'm an educator at Harriman High School, and I tell people West Valley is a great place to be. And I want my kids here, and I want them learning, and I appreciate the schools that we have here. I appreciate the police officers who help us on the roads, but we could use some additional help from you. Please do not rezone that for high density. 
please allow us a little bit more safety. Thank you. Thank you. How much more time do we have? Nine minutes. Okay. Is there anyone else here who wants to speak in public comment? One more. <coughs> Come forward and introduce yourself and where you live. Why? My name is Julie Pace. I live at 5296 West Gateshead Drive. Um, I sent out an email to everyone on City Council, I think, Monday, and I appreciate the few that have emailed me back. I'm a little disappointed that I haven't heard from everyone, but thank you for those who have emailed me back. I appreciate it. Um, I, the only thing I want to say, and it was part of my email, so I hope you have already read it once and you can hear it again. Um, no one else in West Valley has a really has a really excuse me. No one else in West Valley really has a strong opinion about this issue because it does not impact them directly. I get that. This issue impacts a small group of people who are trying to be as vocal as they can. Please listen. I have yet to talk to a neighbor who thinks this is a good idea. Please listen. We have unresolved parking issues that will be magnified with more density housing. Please listen. Members of City Council, if you do not have a strong opinion one way or another, please realize that the people that it impacts the most do have a strong opinion. It matters to us. Please listen. This is my city too. I want to stay here. I want to know that I am being heard by my elected officials. If you hear us, then the choice is simple. Keep the zoning the way it is. If you vote to rezone, then the city council has spoken loud and clear that our voice doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no further comments. We'll bring it back and we'll close the public comment portion. We'll come back to council. Uh, our assistant city manager, Mr. Paul Isaac, do you have any comments? No, sir. To the council? Councilman Buehler. I would just uh, say thank you for coming and expressing your opinions. As some of you were speaking, I uh, was a little bit uh, reflective and thinking how nervous I would be to stand there and be the only one speaking and talking to people who aren't uh, interacting with you and speaking back, but I want you to know that uh, you've been heard. And uh, this zoning issue doesn't come up on our agenda for a while, but um, we are certainly, if I can speak for all of us, all interested in um, the opinions of the residents because we're residents and we want every part of West Valley to achieve its potential and be as good as possible. At least uh, that's how I think and how I see the city. So thank you for coming and expressing your opinions. Thank you. It has been really enjoyable the last uh, few weeks to have a lot of people here and expressing their comments. Uh, by comparison, a lot of times it's like a ghost town. Uh, not many come. Uh, of course, we don't do many things that invite that. Most of our stuff is routine. So thank you for being here. Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes. Before we close public comment, I know in the past you've allowed folks to raise their hand just to get a, a to gauge the room uh, as far as those that didn't get to speak but are here for the same issue. Is yeah. that appropriate at this point? Sure. Uh, those who, ca who came here who, with the comments that were made about Highbury, and I think that's the key one, uh, that we're here and in favor of the comments that were made, just raise your hand. Okay, so most of you are here. There are a couple of others that aren't, but okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, now I feel like that way. Okay, now we move on on our agenda. Next on our agenda is a public hearing for application ZT5. Just one question, sir, or staff. Did you want to uh, review anything next week and uh, as far as we're concerned? Because these are the same as last <coughs> week, uh, we'll follow the same procedure. I don't think we need to add those because the parking issue we're in the middle of working on, just for your information. Uh, we're also doing a study on that as well as the enforcement. So we're in the middle of that. So we probably won't do an additional comment on that. 
the uh, zoning is coming up and there will be a planning commission hearing on the 23rd and so that's also working its way through the process so we will probably not same comments we gave in our study meeting not that we aren't interested but the process right now is being worked on outside of the meeting rather than here which is where it really should be at this point thank you sir okay so to application ZT-5 2017 filed by the city this is an ordinance amendment change to our use tables that allow outline the permitted conditional and prohibited uses by zone <coughs> add some triggers where certain improvements are required make other technical changes to title seven and so <laughs> turning into a ghost town. Yep. <laughs> But that's okay, we expected that, so. Uh, so we are revising our code over the years as we add and subtract and the state law changes. Uh, every once in a while we need to go back through and kind of summarize everything, rewrite it so it's more current uh, without a lot of significant changes. And as I, I think back on this discussion on seven, this is mostly technical. I don't think there are any major policy changes. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, our action tonight will, uh, but we always present it to the public, and so if there's someone here to speak on that. At this point, uh, we will also address Ordinance 18-13 in conjunction with that when we come back to the council. So with that introduction then to the public, is there anyone here who wants to make some comments on this application, this issue. There's some around the other corner there that I can't see always. I have two blind spots out both ways, so. Uh, seems there's no public comment, so we will close public comment, bring it back to the council then for any comments or action. We're going to move for approval of uh, Ordinance 18-13. Second. Properly before us. Any further council discussion? Any further comments? Seeing no further comments, we'll turn to our city recorder for the roll call vote. Councilman Fiti-Samani? Aye. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Newman? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Nordfeldt? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we go to Ordinance 18-14. Uh, this is uh, to amend the section of our code dealing with uh, the electrical requirements. We're adopting the 2017 edition of the National Electric Code. And uh, although it's not always perfect, we think there's great value in staying consistent with codes across uh, the country. Uh, so this just brings us into compliance with that. That's what the changes are. And there are some changes, some uh, actual uh, requirements that change, but uh, we'll adopt those to be consistent. That is the introduction to it, to the council for any comments. I have a question for staff. Yes. Just wondering what happens if we don't adopt the new code? I suppose we don't necessarily uh have to comply with that, but I would imagine we still would. If, if we hadn't been updating this uh, for the last hundred years, we'd still have direct current power <laughs> for our homes and things like that, maybe. Well, I'm just curious sometimes. Uh, Ms. Call, do you have a question? Yeah, so um, because that's adopted state law, the state law would then, of course, preempt our older codes and we would be required to comply with the state level codes anyway. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Somebody has higher authority after all. It doesn't necessarily make you folks moot. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll maybe fall in line and I'll uh, start that by moving for approval of Ordinance 18 14. Second. Any further discussion? Now, of course, if we were to disagree, uh, you know, we could make a statement by not adopting it and then go lobby the legislature to make those changes. And if we had a good case and good reason, 
uh, there is that possibility that they would modify it too. So, but it, but if but if we don't have a good reason, it probably won't go very far. So it's not like we don't have a say, but the process is just a little different. Seeing no further comments, to our city recorder for the roll call vote. Councilman Nordfeld? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Mueller? Aye. Councilman Patisa Manu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next we have resolution 18-53 authorizing the city to purchase two park maintenance mowers. Uh, the cost on that is $61,994. And uh, this will be purchased from Stoltz Equipment Company. Uh, we always try and get the best price on them that we can. Uh, these are John Deere mowers and it's used not just for mowing but uh, let's see snow removal in the winter and so uh, these are older mowers that are being replaced these are our mid-sized mowers right now with that introduction to the council for any additional comments on it or for a motion i move for approval of resolution 18-53 second properly for us any further comments Seeing none, to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Fittisamanu? Aye. Councilman Wheeler? Aye. Councilman Hume? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Nordfeld? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, let's see. We have uh, two items on our consent agenda, and these are fairly routine, a quick claim deed and temporary construction easement uh, near the bridge on 6400 West. Uh, that we've had several others before and uh, also that was 1854 and resolution 1855 a public sidewalk lighting and utility easement at uh, 3456 south redwood road these are come to before us quite often as we do our work in the city so with that introduction we'll turn to the council any comments or a motion move for approval of the consent agenda second see no further comments to our city recorder for the vote councilman nordfeld yes councilman christensen yes councilman Hume. aye councilman bueller aye councilman Fittisamani? aye and mayor McGill. aye motion passes unanimously now that completes our regularly scheduled agenda any final comments from the council or if not we'll just take a final Motion. motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. It passes unanimously. We're adjourned.